When it comes to video players, I'm pretty picky. Honestly, it's really MPV for me or bust. MPV is the best video player on Linux, and I don't think that it's even close, to be honest with you. But that doesn't mean that it's not good and proper to actually go and, you know, look at other options, because that's what we do on the Linux cast. We look at other options and we try new things, and that's how you learn and grow. So today we're going to be taking a look at a new video player called Haruna. I think that's what it's called, Haruna. And it is different in that it is super customizable, but also that it's written in QT. Now, that's actually fairly rare. There's not a lot of video players out there written in Qt. It's This is, means it's usually a KDE application, but you could use it anywhere, of course. Most, in fact, all desktop environments support Qt, and you could obviously download all the requirements for it if you don't happen to have them already. So Haruna is very customizable, as I said. So first, let's go ahead and take a look at what it actually looks like. So this right here is Haruna. And as you can see, what it's doing right now is actually streaming Brody's gaming stream that's happening right now. It's not doing a very good job of it. So let's just start off with something negative, as I usually do. I'm not sure if there is an option to increase the buffer size that you can actually... Like, you can increase the buffer size on MPV which basically means that you can stream live streams much easier because it will get you a, a buffer to play from so it doesn't just sit there and stall every few seconds. Uh, that doesn't seem to be the case with Haruna. I haven't actually delved into anything yet, so I don't know whether or not there's an option to change that. There probably is, actually, given the number of options. But uh, as it is right now, live streaming on it, not that great. Just out of the box. So just pointing that out. But it does, as you can see, give you the option to play videos from anywhere. You can take any YouTube or you know Vimeo or whatever URL you want, plug it in here and watch it, even if it's live. So that's really cool. And also, as you can see, it is very much a KDE application. So it has all of the stuff that you would you know expect to see, you know, in a KDE application. It has all the bells and whistles, you know, the configuring keyboard shortcuts and the all the you know, settings and stuff like that that we'll go through over here in a minute. And it just looks very much like a QT application. Now, this obviously is not going to fit in with everyone's aesthetic. So if you're using uh, GNOME, this is not going to fit in very well. There are probably better options for you uh, in terms of things that actually fit in with your desktop environment. But if you're using KDE, uh, this could be a very good option for you because it's going to fit in aesthetically. It's going to use your KDE Plasma theme if you have one set up. I'm just using the Breeze theme right now, but if you're using, you know, the Windows theme or the, uh, you know, the Sweet Candy theme or whatever the hell it's called, you know, it, it would use that and it would fit in with the rest of your operating system, which is pretty nice. So uh, let me actually stop this here. We don't need to keep that going. It does actually look like it keeps buffering. So if you wanted to catch a buffer you could pause it and then play it from there and it wouldn't actually keep stuttering. So it would play much better now that it has a little bit of a, of a, of a cache. So that's cool. This is a video player. Honestly, we could probably stop right here. It plays videos. It does it fairly well. We could stop there. But what makes Haruna interesting isn't that it plays videos, because if it didn't play videos, it wouldn't need to exist. What makes it interesting, actually, is the amount of settings that it comes with. So I'm actually going to show you the settings right here. So if we start out, you can basically customize anything about this application. You can customize the interface in any number of ways. You can change, obviously, the color scheme. You'll get more options for color schemes if you have more color schemes installed. You can alter many different playback options, you know, the amount of time that it seeks. Uh, when you press the button, you can change whether or not the hardware encoding is enabled or disabled. It looks like it's enabled by default, which is probably the proper option. It does have an option to remember time position, which is not all that usual in video players. MPV does it. I think VLC does it, but I think that's mostly it. So this does have that option, which is really nice. It does give you the option to skip chapters by default, skip words. I don't really know what that means, uh, skip words, but um, maybe if the chapter has a specific word in it, it will automatically skip it. That could be cool. It does have some YouTube DL integration inside of it, which is nice if you use that thing. Don't use that thing, obviously. You're not supposed to. Wink, wink. It also allows you to take screenshots and gives you some options for 
uh, video playback and image adjustments. Uh, same thing with some audio. It doesn't have a lot of audio stuff here. I'm honestly surprised there's not a lot of a lot more audio uh, options here, but it, it does have some. Honestly, I am kind of surprised that there aren't more. Uh, it gives you some options for su subtitles. It can you can load in custom subtitles if you want to. It gives you options for styling the subtitles. You can create playlists of videos. So if you wanted to watch like a, a season of TV shows, you could do so right inside of this and it would show you the playlist on the right or left side, depending on how you want it. There are some options for customizing how the mouse works inside of Haruna. And is with every single KDE application out there, there are a ton of options for customizing your keyboard shortcuts. So if you are a keyboard centric user of the operating system, let me see if I can get this centered again. Thank you, uh, Xmonad. You can go in here and customize any keyboard shortcut that you like, and that's freaking amazing. Now, obviously, this is not the only video application that does this. If you use MPV, you can customize all the key bindings there too as well. I think VLC gives you some options for that as well. So it's not unique here, but still, it's really cool if, if that's the way you like to use your video applications. So the big deal here is that it does give you the option to customize a ton of stuff, but... Also, on top of that, you can import your own configuration files. So if you have a configuration file saved from somewhere else, you could import that if you want to. That's really cool. So that means that you can move this from computer to computer very much like you can with MPV, which is nice. So that is basically Haruna at its core. So the question then becomes, why would you use this? Why not just use MPV? Why not just use VLC, GNOME videos, or whatever you currently use? Well, there are a couple things. So... First, obviously, and I think the biggest one is going to be compatibility with the desktop environment that you're using. So if you're using Plasma and you theme all your stuff with Plasma stuff, this is going to fit in better than basically anything else. It's going to use your Plasma themes and it's just going to look better inside of your environment than anything else probably could. That's probably the biggest one. The other one is the customizability. This is a fairly new application, so... It's going to be growing in terms of options that it has, and it already has quite a few options available to you to actually customize how it looks, feels, and operates. So going through this, if you like customizing things, this is an option for you. Now, I will say it's probably not the most customizable video player out there. It's not there yet, but it is new. And because it is a KDE application now, you can expect there to be development on it fairly frequently, and if you've ever used a KDE application before, you'll know that they like their options. So you're going to see more and more options come to this application as it matures. So that's the second reason why you'd want to use it. Now, me personally, well, let's just put it this way. I much prefer MPV and it, nothing... I don't think that there's anything under the sun that could possibly get me to go away from MPV. MPV is just the best. Uh, but that being said, there's nothing wrong with Haruna. It works really, really well. It gives you the options that you need to have, plus quite a few others. And if you are a keyboard-centric user and you don't want to configure all your keyboard shortcuts via configuration file, uh, the ability to customize all those things right in their settings is really cool. So that is Haruna. If you have thoughts on uh, this, you can leave those in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you. You can follow me on Mastodon or Odyssey. Those links will be in the video description. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast. Links for LiberaPay and YouTube will be in the video description as well. Thanks to everybody who does support me on Patreon and YouTube. You guys are all absolutely amazing. Without you, the challenge will not be anywhere near where it is right now. So thank you so very, very much for your support. I truly do appreciate it. You guys are awesome. Seriously. If you, guys, if you are still watching the video at this point and you haven't already, hit that like button. It really does help the channel. After my two-week illness, YouTube kind of took me out of the algorithm, so I'm kind of having to fight my way back. So if you could get hit the like button, I'd really appreciate it. Thanks, everybody, for watching. I'll see you next time.